We're coming up on the 80th anniversary of D-Day. If we think about D-Day, people think about their memories of the film Saving Private Ryan. They think about the fighting on the beaches, in particular Omaha Beach, where the fighting was particularly awful. The story of D-Day is actually much bigger and more complicated than that. America's success and the Allies' success in D-Day was highly contingent upon individual excellence and a series of people at every level, from the kids on the beaches to their slightly older leaders to the generals sitting offshore to the senior generals in England and the politicians in England and the United States, being excellent and doing their jobs better than the other guy on the Nazi side of the equation. Dwight Eisenhower wrote a letter on June the 5th on the way to the, speak to the paratroopers about to go into Normandy that night in which he takes full responsibility for the failure of the landings. If any blame or fault attaches to the attempt, it is mine alone. Which shows his mindset and how prepared he was for this thing to go the other way. There is an incredible backstory with Dwight Eisenhower. Once he said go, things were gonna be out of his hands. There was no putting that toothpaste back in the tube. And that decision for him really came down to the weather. We hardly trust weathermen today. Imagine trusting weathermen in June of 1944. Imagine the weight of responsibility on that man's shoulders, because if he says go and the weather turns out to be bad, it's very unlikely that they'll meet with success. of Western Europe. A landing was made this morning on the coast of France by troops of the Allied Expeditionary Force. This landing is but the opening phase of the campaign in Western Europe. On June the 6th, 1944, the Allies, primarily America, Brits, and the Canadians, landed on the shores of Normandy and seized a beachhead there, actually seized five beaches, um, which were ultimately linked up. So if you, you picture the situation on Omaha Beach, it really is hell on earth. There was this long debate between the Army and the Navy, essentially, in the lead up to the landings about where the tide should be. The Army obviously wanted it to be as, as high a tide as possible, so that when the troops disembark from their landing craft, they're as close to the high ground as you can be. As it turns out, the tide was somewhat lower when the troops were released, and so there's a very long distance to get across this beach, which is itself littered with anti-tank obstacles, all manner of anti-infantry materials. And then, of course, you're in these overlapping fields of fire. So from the perspective of the individual assaulter, you're not just under fire from what's directly in front of you, you're under fire constantly from your flanks by weapons of all, all different sizes, small arms all the way up to heavy artillery. And you have to navigate through this challenge both physically and mentally, which is enough of a challenge right there. But then if you're a leader like Joe Dawson and you have a company to command and a company to get off the beach, you have to navigate that challenge at an intellectual level too. One of the really pivotal events on the morning of D-Day itself is the, the near run success at Omaha Beach. I say near run because it was very nearly a failure. Omar Bradley, who was the American commander responsible for the troops ashore, almost called off the Omaha landings mid course because the situation on the beach was so confused and our forces were failing to penetrate off the beach through the dunes and up, sort of up the bluffs. There's this sort of terrible high ground. Omaha Beach was the link up beach between Utah Beach to the west and the British and Canadian beaches to the east. And had Omaha not been secured, it's very likely that those two beach complexes wouldn't have been linked together, which would at a minimum have significantly delayed our progress in the Battle of Normandy. And it's not crazy at all to think about how it could have delayed the end of the war, that the war with Nazi Germany might have extended past May 1945. That's a pretty horrific thing to think about. The success of the Allies at D-Day hastened the conclusion of the war and victory in Europe and victory over Nazi Germany, and really at a deeper level signaled the ascension of the United States as a global power, supplanting the British Empire before it. As we enter into a period where a lot of us are anticipating things getting more rather than less dangerous in the Pacific, it's worth reflecting on exactly what the elements of success for something as grand as D-Day were. Because if we are gonna deter the Chinese, we're gonna need to be capable of the same degree of excellence. And God forbid, if we find ourselves in a war in the Western Pacific, success will require the same degree of excellence at numerous levels.